everybody. Um, thank you for coming. Uh, it's been, I think, a product that I've been wanting to do with Julie for a really long time, and it's an idea that I've been thinking about for a long time now, so it means a lot that you're on here. Um, before I get started, I want to thank Jeannie and Rodrigo for uh, being willing to sponsor me and helping me in all the ways that I need it. And another thanks to the amazing sculptor Paul Bowen um, for being my outside evaluator. Uh, his themes within his sculptures are a lot similar to what I was kind of trying to achieve with um, found objects, and they were super inspiring. And I also want to thank um, my friends, my family, who've been alongside me contemplating and working with me throughout this whole process. Um, I had no clue what I wanted to do when I made this somewhat impulsive decision to do an exhibition. I still don't really know what I was thinking. But when I texted Jeannie to see if she was down to, um, to sponsor me at 1.30 in the morning, and she responded in 10 seconds, I figured it must be a sign or something like that. I knew I wanted to do something involving jewelry and sculpture, but didn't have any real ideas. However, about a weekend, after some panicking, I realized my project had already begun months prior. And really, it started with a question that I was repeatedly asking myself at the time. That being, what is it within art that has such an amazing ability to captivate us and move us spiritually? There's infinite reasons. I don't think it can be conceptualized. However, um, when I was growing up, I lived in a log cabin embedded in the woods that my dad made with his hands. We didn't have plumbing or internet or really any technology other than a 6x6 six 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 inch battery TV on a shelf. I grew up surrounded by trees, streams, ferns, and flowers, and they were my entertainment. So my earliest memories are being captivated by how the sun glowed through the little purple wildflowers in our front yard and carving it to Birch Park. Months before even thinking about doing my exhibition, I was out walking around in the field that I live in now, and I found myself in that same sort of captivity, mesmerized by the different patterns, textures, and sculptural qualities I was finding in nature, and I started documenting them through my phone. Um, these photos will end up being my reference and inspiration for many of the different forms and ideas within the jewelry within the jewelry and sculptures I've ended up making. At first it was a challenge. I wasn't quite sure how I was actually going to implement something like a locust tree into a piece of jewelry. I decided to start by focusing in on the rawest, most simplistic forms. I experimented with copper wire so as to not waste silver and implemented intertwining or implemented the intertwining pattern that locust trees tend to have throughout their trunks and limbs. That was the original uh, copper work project I was messing around with at first. It's kind of like this big, crazy sculptural ring, but yeah. Um, for this piece, I decided to continue with that same pattern, but this time with silver. It was also by far the most time-consuming piece because I decided to solder the chain and twist each length into a spiraling form. Independent required lots of hammering and rebending to give it the intertwining structure that I wanted. I wanted to give the whole necklace more movement and a feeling of aliveness. The next technique I used was charcoal casting, a technique where you carve a negative or a positive design into a compressed brick of charcoal, fill the carving with a small piece of um, with small pieces of silver, apply a flame till it melts, and then quickly put another piece of charcoal on top of it to push the silver into every bit of the carving. There are some challenges in this bit of the process, and a couple of designs that I simply failed to complete. It can be extremely difficult um, to get silver to flow into the more intricate parts of a design when using charcoal. However, occasionally, um, occasional failure um, is an essential part of my process. I like it to be chaotic and filled with experimentation. It feels more genuine to blast music, get in a creative flow, see what I create, and then contemplate it later. Casting was a great method for my process because it allowed experimenting with the design as much as I wanted in a fairly unrefined, simplistic, and incredibly satisfying manner. I also chose to work with this technique because I think it's a beautiful way to connect, uh, connect the design of my own um, creation with the nature of molten silver and the movement and textures it creates. Um, cuttlefish or cuttlebone casting was the next technique I would use um, to work with this idea. I never tried it before or heard of it, but it's kind of exactly what it sounds like. A cuttlefish has one large, brittle bone in their body. Usually it's sold as bird feet, but it just so happens um, 
to be an incredible medium for silver casting, and people have been experimenting with it since before the 7th century. To use it as a casting method, you saw straight down the middle of the, um, of the bone horizontally, giving you the most surface area to work with. Then, like charcoal castings, you carve your design into the inner part of the bone that's been exposed. You can't get terribly detailed, um, can't get terribly detailed carvings because of its brittle nature, but the natural rippling texture is unlike anything you can get from charcoal. Um, the next step is to carve a funnel entrance that will allow silver that you melt in a crucible to flow into the bone and create a design. This technique was fascinating to me. It created such a clear example of how different patterns and textures are repeated in nature across environments. When I was swimming the other day, I noticed the rock structures around me had the exact same wavy, overlapping patterns as that of the color bone. I think the human ability to recognize these patterns is one of the reasons it makes nature and art for that matter so captivating. Um, and now for this part of the project, I kind of, instead of, I mean, I have the pictures here, but instead of just showing you pictures of them, I actually want to have models come in and so you could experience them in person. Um, so yeah, we have a short little runway of this collection. <laughs> Not like, 
I would say the town of Belichick stuff is definitely the most fun like process because I was just out and like with friends and it was really cool. But I think watching the metal kind of like turn to this liquid and flow through like the cuttlefish was really cool. And also you don't get to see what you made until you like open up the shell of the cuttlefish, so it's kind of a surprise every time. Yeah. Yeah. Are you That was kind of the challenge, and I think with the found object stuff, I tried to kind of, um, I didn't want my vision to like distract the piece of wood as much as I possibly could, you know, I wanted it to maybe help ornament it on someone, but not necessarily like be the main event of the piece, sort of. Yeah. And with silver, I wanted to try and mainly focus on like the textures rather than the actual forms, and then kind of. I don't know, use whatever forms that came to mind. Yeah? Um, do you uh, concern yourself much with whether the work is perceived as art or craft? <laughs> no, I've been doing shit. Yes. It's whatever. I like it and I think it's beautiful. So, yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, definitely um, furniture is something that I want to maybe try and work with at some point. I wouldn't know really where to start, but that's, I guess, the next place I'd go. Uh, yeah, Lynn? I'm curious, of course, um, about the role of photography, um, mm -hmm. which there was quite a bit of in your presentation that I've seen over the last couple of years. And it, it seems like you're looking for, or you find inspiration how you would speak to what the role is that mean? Yeah, I mean, I think like people almost get annoyed at me at how much I like document certain things when I'm walking around in them, I think, just because I, I don't know, there's just, especially in nature too, there's just things that I feel like too beautiful, but like not to capture, like I just want to like kind of savor them and have them. And I think, I mean, as far as like making jewelry based off of them, there's like this kind of permanent reference that I can go off of, which is super helpful. And especially in black and white, it kind of isolates the more like raw forms from whatever object or plant I was working from. Uh, Paul? Yeah. yeah, thanks, thanks, and congratulations. Um, I'd love to see where the wearable thing, the big wearable things could go yeah. next. I would do <laughs> some sure. video presentation with actors perhaps wearing these things. Yeah, if, totally. but if you let's say you had another six months free with whatever materials or place you wanted to work, but it was sort of along these lines, what do you think you might do? Um. I think I wouldn't limit them. Most of these were like simply like pendants and stuff like that. But some of the projects that uh, I was working on that I didn't include in this exhibition, they were kind of collaborative pieces, were like um, like handbags or backpacks even made of like birch bark and stuff like that. So I mean, mainly just like adding on to the collection, just making more kind of. Yeah. Um, yeah, for sure. I spend it. Well, kind of like I said, I think when I was little, it was definitely more like an apparent part of who I was. And then, I don't know, maybe somewhere I drifted off a little bit. And for sure, during this project, it's like I've become kind of like hypersensitive to like looking at different patterns and just fixating on them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think that the, um, especially the jewelry where you're holding the patterns of the trees is incredibly powerful. Mm -hmm. And why do you feel the need to, why do you feel the need to do that? Wait, sorry, can you re that question? <laughs> <laughs> why, why do you like witness these incredible patterns? What is, what's driving you to build them into jewelry or into objects? Well, I think they're just, 
I mean, mainly I think they're incredibly beautiful, but also I think, especially regarding nature, I think that's where all of us kind of come from right here, and it's something just a lot deeper than I could really maybe put in, like explain verbally or something like that. Yeah, I don't know, that's why I'm not shot at that, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. What's your favorite piece that you have? Oh, um, let's see. Probably this one. It's kind of, it's like, yeah, it has, um, it's cool because all of it kind of rotates, and when you, uh, so like, the main piece of silver here is on this, like, circular end, and then you can kind of prop it up to its own kind of miniature sculpture, too. Yeah, that's probably my favorite. Yeah. Are there any, um, do you have any reservations or, um, struggles with kind of adding your mark to certain pieces of the nature? Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, it's more, it's like, how do I even add something that's already so beautiful, what kind of, which, definitely, I mean, it takes a lot of, I mean, mainly just like thinking about how I do it, I don't know how to spend a lot of time kind of contemplating different, different ideas and configurations of, like, wood and how I connect with it, just like chain, so it's not like too distracting to the main piece. Yeah. Yeah. Based on your own story of uh, this exhibition coming to fruition at 1.30 in the morning, I'm curious, uh, looking back, about like, thank God I said yes when there was a moment that I almost didn't do it, yeah. or maybe a slightly different reflection of like, man, if I had pre-planned a little bit more, I could have gotten a little bit more out. And I'm, I'm curious about that, how you entered this exhibition. Yeah. I, mean, I don't really know, I'm thinking, at the beginning, I was like really fired up. I was like, um, I was definitely, I mean, obviously right now, I've, I've, like the last few days have been pretty anxious about like, oh man, I could have done this, this, and this, but like, I think it came together exactly how I wanted it to, to be honest. 